Welcome to today's value chain stakeholder conversation, a timely conversation among policymakers, value chain stakeholders to include restaurants, hotels, supermarkets, farmers, fisher folks, agro-processors, and of course, service providers. Today's meeting is very important to identify and discuss existing gaps between demand and supply, to identify and strengthen linkages among various stakeholders along the value chain, to develop an action plan that clearly identifies priority actions of value chain, and to create a working group to champion the priority actions that we have agreed upon. Good afternoon, and a warm welcome to all present here this afternoon. Thank you for responding to our invitation to discuss how stakeholders can partner to strengthen value chain opportunities. Just about five years ago, we experienced the worst natural disaster ever to be recorded in our part of the world. Our agriculture sector was decimated. We were forced to import eggs, fresh fruit and vegetables, and other crops. Our livestock farmers lost their animals. Our fisher folk lost their vessel. Just a mere two years later, we experienced a shock of a pandemic, and now the Russia-Ukraine war. In a mere five years, our tiny island has experienced challenges that could have broken us. But as a people, as a government, we remain focused. We have stood resilient because this government has a track record of planning ahead. The strong fiscal and social policies of this government has kept Dominica on the upward trajectory. Our present here today is timely. The Prime Minister and the Cabinet and I understand that even in a time of crisis, there is opportunity. And we want to prepare our farmers, youth, hucksters, exporters, vendors, agro-processors and all stakeholders of the agriculture industry for the opportunities that are present and yet to come. Fortunately for us, over the past five years, we have been very visionary, utilizing the citizenship by investment by heavily investing in our hotel sector and tourism product. The International Airport will also open vast opportunities for both local consumption and exports. In the past five years, an amount of over $170 million has been invested in the sector. This includes direct support to our farmers, fisher folk, and other agriculture infrastructure across the country. These funds, which became available through the negotiation of the Honorable Prime Minister, the agriculture sector continues to show signs of positive growth from 2019. In 2020, the sector expanded by 2.1%. In 2021, agriculture value added stood at $122.5 million, or 13.3% of GDP. The fishery sector value added stood at $5.59 million. To date, over 4,000 farmers have received vouchers for fertilizer, agrochemicals, tools, and equipment. Last fiscal year, we distributed over 4,000 citrus plants, over 25,000 cocoa plants, over 7,000 avocado plants and over 500,000 vegetable seedlings. The evidence of these investments are showing because production is at an all-time high and we can see this through our local markets and supermarkets. We have been providing steady support to our poultry farmers. In the last financial year, over 45 poultry farmers have received a total of 18,000 birds and over 2,400 bags of feed. 37 pork farmers receive a total of 1,500 bags of feed. To date, 
we record over 250 pounds of local meat being sold by our very own national abattoir. We had one local company, Crispies, who came on board and is a constant purchaser of our local chicken breast. As of August 1st, 2021, the VAT on hatchery eggs was removed. By this measure, instead of importing their old chicks, our farmers can now import fertilized eggs which will be hatched here in Dominica. In the recent months, we have seen the investments in the hatchery by several private sector owners. Our aquaculture is growing. In the last fiscal year, we rehabilitated the Belfast Prawn Farm Hatchery. Following the rehabilitation, in the recent months, the hatchery has produced over 100,000 post larvae, which was distributed to over five farmers across the island. Ladies and gentlemen, I have listed all of the above to demonstrate that as a government, we have kept agriculture as a sector, as a key sector, and it's got this government's priority. And so today, we are confident of the investments we have made, and we are confident that we have created an environment that is ripe for investment. We are here to plan the next steps as we forge ahead. Today, I want to urge our farmers that you must begin to consider technological innovations and the introduction of high-tech solutions as smart greenhouses, drone and tablet technology for imagery, capturing and monitoring of data, robotics product application, as well as, a various, as well as various water and soil management, electronic sensors, and harvesting of machinery that will allow our farmers to harvest quicker and more efficiently for better results. I urge all tech stakeholders that we must work together to commercialize the sector. With, increase, with increasing the number of farms, more youth and private sector investments should be involved in this process. As this is necessary to improve the presence both on the regional and international markets. Friends, all these elements, when converged, will no doubt increase productivity, output, and position Dominica's agriculture to be the most successful and to contribute even more to the national economy. The Ministry of Agriculture, our main aim is to ensure, one, the resilience and sustainable agriculture through building resilience and agro-diversity and agriculture production systems to natural hazards and climate change impact for productive and sustainable agriculture. Two, innovation and competition, facilitating development and enhancement of the agribusiness and value chain system through technology, knowledge, market, and financial innovation. Three, food availability, affordability, safety, and nutrition, considering supplying the national food system with increasing the portion of safe and nutritious food locally produced and to meet the dietary food preferences of the population as a sure base, as a, and assure basic food needs in the aftermath of crisis. As I end, I must say that I am pleased that as many of you have responded to our invitation, your voice is equally and absolutely important, and I assure you that we will return to continue the dialogue. We are responsible for the growth of Dominica and Dominicans. I urge us to eat local and buy local. In closing, I urge all of you to activate, actively participate sorry, in the conversation, and I wish all of us a successful and productive discussion. Thank you. Uh, thank you for accepting the invitation to participate in this consultation. This meeting of minds provides us with an opportunity to present ideas and recommendations on how we can build stronger value chain relationships, promote food security, and achieve sustainable growth in the agricultural sector. 
to reduce obstacles in the value chain to facilitate access to buyers and markets, there is a need for frank conversation among all stakeholders to address the current state of production and supply in Dominica. Based on my recurring conversations with farmers, consumers, purchasers of agricultural produce, I believe there is a wide disconnect in our general approach to production and sale. As a government, we have therefore decided, to, decided on targeting, targeted interventions in the sector to assist enterprises to source, produce, and connect to markets. These interventions are intended to enhance the business and entrepreneurship capacity of our farmers, fishers, and small agro processors. Our objective is to bring together stakeholders at each stage of the value chain to enhance the understanding of market requirements and strengthen access to the products which make it onto our supermarket shelves, to restaurants and hotels, and are packaged for export. This last point is of particular importance. Producers, including many of you here this evening, have told us of the challenges you are facing in accessing stable and reliable markets for your agricultural produce. We also hear from purchasers at the restaurants and hotels and at our large supermarkets who cite issues related to consistency. Quality products, they tell us, are not usually available in regular supply. This is not only a hiccup for local purchasers. There are instances when we are unable to supply the right quantities of grown provisions or plantings to buyers in the region. This indicates that markets are available, but we must be more coordinated in our efforts to match our production to the local and regional demands. The question we must answer at the consultation, therefore, is how can we address sourcing issues for local produce, and more broadly, how do we reduce Dominica's food import bill for the goods which are resold at incredibly high prices? At the end of today's consultation, our aim is to, one, identify and discuss existing gaps between demand and supply. Two, identify and strengthen linkages among various stakeholders along the value chain. Three, develop an action plan that clearly identifies priority actions of value chain stakeholders. And four, create a working group to champion the priority actions agreed upon. If we're able to meet the objectives of this meeting, I am confident we will soon see the creation of more employment opportunities, higher incomes, and the advancement of sustainable livelihoods. Our objective is to link more of your enterprises to market opportunities and create the enabling environment to improve sector performance. Currently, Agriculture in Dominica contributes approximately $230 million to the economy. That is based on figures from the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. Though I have maintained consistently for many years that I believe agriculture contributes way more than what is reported to the GDP of our country. This government's plan is to keep growing the sector to a, to a level where it can contribute $700 million to the economy by 2030. And I think that is the figure we can achieve. And we can achieve it by a coordinated approach, all stakeholders working in unison and focusing on that. So let us take it from the 230, 300 million now to 700 million by 2030. And the question is, how do we plan to achieve this goal? We will increase our productive capacity and efficiency by incentivizing more women and young people to get involved in agriculture 
as full-time profession. There is money to be made from the sector. If the approach is businesslike, returns on the sale of agricultural produce can range in the millions on a monthly basis. There is also the constant need for innovation in agriculture. Farmers must keep adapting to extreme climate and weather patterns and find new ways to increase their yields from the land. Government will help our farmers improve efficiency through the application of technology to include farm automation and digitalization and other more familiar methods such as hydroponics, crop rotation and greenhouse technologies. The digitalization of our local farms is not a far-fetched concept. We are already seeing this in action with a local venture launched by two young Dominicans who were recently engaged by DEXA. And government is also open to supporting more of these initiatives to fast track the adoption of appropriate technologies to meet market requirements and boost productivity. Government will continue its support of farmers through the provision of financial support, equipment, and supplies, and the construction of farm access roads. As we speak, contracts totaling in excess of $22 million have been contracted to improve farm access roads in many communities across Dominica. We will take action to further penetrate the regional market and increase the sale of Dominican products to our sister islands. We are doing well with the sale of ground provisions, such as dasheen and sweet potatoes and yams, as well as planting. But there is potential for a vast increase in the sale of Dominican produce abroad. In the mold of the Discord Dominican Authority, which is a marketing agency for tourism, government will establish an agri-marketing arm with the Ministry of Trade and Enterprise Development to seek additional markets and promote the sale of Dominican produce in the region and further afield. The agency will take a focused approach to corner the market and ensure a steady flow of agricultural produce for sale abroad. And as you recognize in my budget address of this year, I signal the establishment of this entity and the intention there is to create the Agricultural Development Authority, which will have as its mandate the linking of production to market, to research and development. My view is that this agency will coordinate all aspects of production and marketing, and also oversee technology introduction and, and adaptation, plant propagation, and financing to support the commercialization of agricultural production and agribusiness. The agency will comprise of both public and private sector interests. And I can say to you, I am convinced and I am sure you, are, you, you, are, you agree with me, now is the right time to bring this organization into effect. The construction of an international airport will allow us to expand our international market reach. In order to satisfy the demand which will be created by increased air access, we must prepare now. We can't wait for the airport to be built and start preparing. Here again, we will incentivize farmers, fishers, and livestock farmers to increase production, to take advantage of opportunities in cruise tourism, expansion in the hotel sector, and enhance air access on the island. Government will encourage diversification into non-traditional, high-value fruits and vegetables, such as cantaloupes, strawberry, blueberry, bell peppers, broccoli, cauliflower, and many others. I see no reason why we should be importing cantaloupes or watermelons into our country. Absolutely no reason. And we can grow strawberries here and mulberries here and reduce our food import bill in Dominica and create wealth for our citizens. There is no reason why we should be importing bell peppers, the red and yellow. We have the best quality bell peppers anywhere in the world and we should have them here sold by our people. And so, as I announced on Monday, this new initiative to target professionals in particular in agriculture and young people and of course middle-aged people are in related fields who can bring some level of expertise to the cultivation, marketing and sale of these crops. Government will provide a quantity of land 
greenhouses, planting material, an irrigation system, and labor for six months. My vision is that participants will manage this venture through a cooperative or company in an organized way, which, will, which guarantees maximum return on investment, youth employment, and food and nutritional security. For our part, in addition to all the facilities provided for startup, we will assist we will assist you to access buyers and new markets. This is my commitment to you. And as we are doing with our discussion on the value chain today, my office will organize a similar conversation in the coming weeks with those of you who are interested. And so you can expect us to step up our marketing campaign, not only to find sales for your produce, but also to remove the stigma that agriculture is for poor country rural folks. Those of us who own and operate farms know this is far from the truth. Our citizens must see agriculture as a means to earn substantial income if it is approached with diligence and a willingness to work hard. And so I am here today mainly to listen to you on your suggestions. Those of us who produce, what challenges do we have in selling? And those of us who are purchasing, what challenges do we have in purchasing? And come out of there, what can we do to overcome those challenges which those of us who are producing have? And what can we do to overcome the challenges that those of us who purchase are having in sourcing the, the, the agricultural produce that we have? And get out of there with an action plan as to how we can deal with those issues. And also within the government system, while we have WTO and other Trade, of, trade obligations, I believe that we have to review our consumption practices. But this is a democracy. At the end of the day, supermarkets will buy, will sell what you buy. And if we go to our, our supermarkets, if we go to our local restaurants and we demand local stuff, then they will give to us that which we buy. And so we ourselves as citizens and as a government we need to adapt and to change our consumption practices. So when we go to the supermarkets, what do we ask for? Do we ask for local chicken or we ask for imported chicken from Portsmouth, England? And if we demand the local, what's going to happen? And so there's so many things that we can do. We have people who are involved in the ripening of bananas. We should have these bananas as our children snack in the morning at school. And we should be able to produce these strawberries here and have them as our snacks ourselves. And so there's so many opportunities. Our first step needs we need to corner the local market. Everything that we eat in this country should be produced by us in Dominica. Where food is concerned, and we have the capacity and the ability to do it. But all of us, all of us, and I'm saying us, we need to have a paradigm shift in our own consumption practices. And in myself as the Prime Minister and in this government, you have an absolute willing partner. And we will continue to work with you to ensure that we can achieve our objectives of creating greater wealth for our farmers and our processors, and ensuring that we can dramatically reduce our food input bill in this country. We have to do more to be able to feed ourselves and to keep the millions that we are, we are sending out of our country by way of foreign exchange and living it in the villages and towns in our country so that people can build wealth and create more jobs for our country. And so the target that we are setting for ourselves as a nation is to have agriculture contributing no less than $700 million to the economy by 2030. There may be some who may feel that this is over-ambitious. But I am confident that with a concerted effort, we can achieve this even before 2030. Thank you very much for listening to me.
I believe it's a timely, it's a timely, it's, it is timely that we take that kind of decision to empower our farmers, to look at agriculture as the lifesaver of our country. I believe agriculture has a role to play. And I've been one of those who have suffered the blow of having my crops sidelined by the supermarkets sometimes. And every one of them can tell you, as they will say it every day, when I bring produce to them, I know it's not about me, but I'm just trying to set the base. When I bring produce to them, they get top quality produce. They never reject anything. Some say that we, I'm happy these supermarkets are here today. They may be giving you reasons for importing stuff, as if to say they can get it cheaper out there. And this is absolutely false. Because the same produce they bring in, they would be selling at the same price. But imagine you're asking for a container of apples, grapes, and whatever. And when you cannot fool the container, if you don't need, don't need all those apples, then you say, let me just fool it with some tomatoes and cabbage. I believe that is where the government can come in and protect the farmers by one, affording the farmers in Dominica. The same kind of protection we get with the Irish potatoes, where you slam a tax of, I think, 150% on the Irish potatoes. The supermarkets should not get a cat blanche to just fool the containers with stuff we have right there in Dominica, swimming on the market. So I believe we have to sort of step in as early as possible to protect agriculture and the farmers of this country. They are the vulnerable ones. I want to again urge the government that initiative will give us a pool of suppliers. Because if the government is going to bring in help to the farmers, we can well expect a lot of people will come, come back into farming. And the farmers are going to expand. Because if you think there's light ahead of the tunnel, you're going to do a lot more. Some say I would like to urge the government, why are you giving scholarships to go and study all sorts of things overseas? Let's ensure that we can get some young people to go and study marketing. Give them scholarships to go out there and search for markets. So that when we decide to flood our market or to produce as much as we can, they would already have done their studies and they can go out there and tap into the foreign markets for us. They would have that professionalism in them. I want to again, I found some thanks in. I want to really ask them to pull their socks up. And the failed extension officers, we really need to, Ministry of Agriculture need to step in and ask the lazy extension officers we have out there to get work to do. They should be able to give the Ministry of, Ministry of Trade and Dex here a projection as to what is expected to come out there. And we should know what we expect to get with it in the next three months, six months, one year, whatever it takes, the crop. And we can prepare or, 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 or know early advance what we have to be doing. So I will text here. The, the extension officers, they have filled the Ministry of Culture. You know, we have been talking about this, this and that, and politicians doing this and politicians doing that. They are worse. <laughs> they, are, they, are, they, are, they are cashing money from the state and doing nothing. I can see it with no reservation. You'll find one or two of them good. You'll find the Leslie and the others, one of them. But I can tell you, generally, extension officers, you don't see them. You don't hear them. They give you no advice. If you ask them how many farmers have crops coming in, tomatoes or whatever coming in, within the next three months, they cannot tell you. So these sort of things, if we don't put them in place early, agriculture will go nowhere. Because you can put in as much millions as you want into agriculture, and we don't have people to manage it on the ground, the people who are supposed to do that. I don't think we will get there. Really. So the next one. But basically, I, I, I would like to urge the government to go out there. Don't just throw things into people who say they are farmers. 
have them assessed and don't have the resources just thrown because you want to set up a boy or a friend, a partner, a, a, a member of my political party or whatever. And we see it from successful governments. It's not a matter of because your government in power today, you take offense because uh, a farmer say that. It has happened in the past. I remember in the time of the past administration, I was one of the farmers who lost the most crops in Salisbury. And when fellas are like, no, 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 God, get stupid, get stuff, I got nothing. Some say it has happened in successful, successive governments. That um, when you have the resources, instead of reaching the farmers, you go to friends and supporters. That we need to really deal with. Last, and, 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 I mean, I, I know I've been waiting to talk. If I don't know if I'll get a second chance again, but however, we see the trend that the fertilizer are taking at this time. Farmers with crops that are almost ready to hit the market within the next two months, three months, one month, they are really going to suffer a blow. Because now we have no, no fertilizer on our land, and the price of fertilizer has doubled. So I call in on the Prime Minister and the Ministry of Agriculture and the Ministry of Trade to do anything desperately to help the farmers. Because at this time, Fertilizer has doubled the price and it's not even available. Dexia bringing it in, and I mean, you imagine Dexia and fertilizer in their shed. Two weeks the fertilizer there, and they cannot sell it to farmers. Like something trading it up there, and farmers suffer. So these are things we really want you to look into, Mr. Douglas, I think that's your ministry. Mm -hmm. It cannot be fair for the material to be on island in your shed. You have to push and move to make the thing available to the farmers. So, Mr. Prime Minister, I don't know what sort of duties on the fertilizers, I don't know what it is, but anything you can do, whether to subsidize it, to find a way to help the farmers as soon as possible, whether we can get it from other solution, anywhere just to borrow some from them and we pay them back, because the farmers really crying for fertilizer. If I get a chance again, I will have to say something. That's my good Good afternoon, everyone. The farmers are given tools. My name is Dawn Francis. I manage the Smart Farm. I am also a member of the Central Universal Farmers Group, and I also provide consultancy services in the agriculture sector. So as I was saying, the farmers are tools. They are equipped. However, the support system for the farmers also needs to be appropriately tooled and equipped. So I'm speaking about the extension officers. The extension officers, they require vehicles, they require incentives. Some of them, they do require retraining. I was given the opportunity to engage some extension officers in a community scorecard process um, that has to do with a project under UNDP. And we were able to identify with farmers that they were also part of any, any, the solution to any problem. However, the farmers, they do not sometimes understand the role of the extension officer. So a key part of this is that Within the Ministry of Agriculture, there should be some sensitization um, information where a, the clear role of the extension officer is defined. Because sometimes you find that the farmers go to the extension officers for everything. So that is one point. A key area as well is education and training. If we want sustainability and we want youth to be involved in agriculture, let us look at our the Dominica State College. Yes, there's an associate degree for two years. However, is there an opportunity for a farmer or anybody who is interested in agriculture to do any short courses or any short programs in agriculture business in marketing as well? So we have to look at that part of it. We do know that the schools, they have, um, I would say, ad hoc school programs. So all these, and I'm talking on the point of sustainability, 
you want to get your green agriculture, but what do you have on the ground? Is it properly organized? We have calls at Portsmouth, who I work very closely with, right? And calls they've been engaged in fish processing, fish handling. We, 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 we are making strides, but where is the support? Maybe calls require some additional subvention. So it's not a matter of starting over. There are systems already on the ground engaged in these activities. So it is possible that the government could look at supporting these systems. So when I sit here and I hear of a new agency coming up, I'm like, so why is Dexter really here? You understand? Why should the government look at establishing a new agency? And Dexia is here. Why can't Dexia be the hub where farmers bring in their produce? It is sorted there. And you also have microprocessing and everything happening at Dexia. I mean, look at the buildings in Maria. You know, and I'm saying is that we need to use what we have strengthen what we, we already have, because they exist. So this, this is really my point here today. And um, a doctor cannot do his work without the necessary tools. My extension officers cannot do what they have to do with a minimum salary, without adequate vehicle, without being appointed. Thank you. <laughs> I'm from Penville, my name is Sean Ray, and I'm the president of the Young Farmers Group from Penville. Uh, let me start off with irrigation and let me thank the Prime Minister for making the Sala Water Project happen today. It is now, right now we have farmers planting carrot in Sala consistently. If you need 20 bags of carrot now, go to Penville, you will get it. What we try to work on right now is creating a product in terms of the carrot because I had a carrot that small the other day and the sweetness of that carrot it was out of this world. Now we have an island that we call it Nature Island and we have 365 members. So we shouldn't have an irrigation problem in Dominica on any given farm as long as you can produce you should have a, you should have irrigation. That's what I do personally. Now okay I listened to Mr. Graham, he said that we distributed 4,000 citrus plants. Now, based on my research, I look at certain facilities that you have one skilled worker at these facilities doing 1,000 plants per day. You understand? So, distributing 4,000 plants, not to, you know, it's, it's a bit not enough, as I see it. Now, I haven't been to too many places in the world, but I know for sure Dominica has maybe the most varieties of mangoes in the world, different type of mangoes. Now, as the lady was saying, use what we have, and mangoes is what we have. Now, if you look at some of the, the grafted mango trees, you can see, maybe since years ago, you can see the difference you know, when, when the mango trees were grafted and you can know that some program was in place back then to put those bamboo trees in place. Now, I haven't seen any more coming in. What are we doing to bring more mangoes, to, to craft more mangoes and have that, you know, consistently in the country, right? That's another point. Now, again, based on my research, rice is one of the, the commodities being imported in the country, right? Now, Rice is grown in tropical regions around the world. Now, why, what, I, I don't know, but if you have a program in place where you can, let's say, experiment on rice, you know? We have swamps in Dominica, we have places that can be terraced and, and rice can be grown, we have water. So, at what point are we going to start experimenting? I mean, we have Chinese that start to experiment and we can produce at least 10% of the rice in our country, you know? Hardwood, all them things. Look at the price of materials, by course, it's going up. So how much are we planting in the forest to, you know, put a percentage of 
20%, okay, you can buy your two by fours from that person. That is the kind of drive I, I, I'm looking for, you know. Data collection again, you supposed to be able to go to your extension officer and say, hey, where can I get 50 bags out of ginger? And you're supposed to tell you, okay, go to that farmer. Our data collection is poor. You know, and if we, we get those things rolling, I feel we can be it's just a few things, you know. If we get those things going, we'll be good. We can really call ourselves the nature island. Um, thank you for your time. Miss you. Um, this afternoon was a sad day for agriculture because we lost a beloved colleague, Austin Bell, who was married today. May you so rest in peace. But at the same time, today is a great day for the farmers because we get a chance to talk face to face with those concerned to make life better for us. And I have a few suggestions that I really want to make. First of all, we're looking at the farmer. All of us know that agriculture is market driven. Farmers they are producing, hoping to sell, and because of that, we're getting lots of lots on the market, lots of spoilage. I could tell you last year, I saw a lot of planting that's dropping, and a lot of that you could not sell, because Dexia could only buy a certain quantity, only for London, for England. So farmers could not sell the that I was the victim of that. So I know exactly what we're talking about. Um, we have to think of a way to get Dexia, which is the marketing arm of Dominica's agriculture, to work together with the Ministry of, the, of Agriculture, which is the product, productive arm, the production arm of agriculture. Presently, there's a big gap and there's no linkage. Um, up to Monday, I was listening to the news and Vector um, was asking for us to produce X and Y. So what is the role of the Ministry of Agriculture? Vector would have a contract for Dashim. Instead of getting the agriculturists, the extensionists, to go out there to talk, to get the Dashim ready, they themselves have their own extension people going out to do it. That means where does agriculture fall? We have to rectify that. We're supposed to have one body. And I'm suggesting that the parking house of Dexia is supposed to liaise with the Ministry of Agriculture. Whenever there is a market available, they can communicate to the Ministry of Agriculture to produce the quantity required. And I, I also the Hawks Association. I think they should organize themselves in such a way that the hucksters could report what they want so that the Ministry of Agriculture could get the farmers to produce it. And then, of course, I, I support that Dexia and, and uh, the Hucksters Association supposed to pack the produce properly for quality control. Because if we don't do that, we might just lose our market. Everybody should just send things out to buy it but the linkage is critical. If we don't have this linkage, we will always have this shortfall in agriculture. Because if today a farmer produces X amount of dashin or plantain, and he cannot sell it, what will happen is he is not going to produce. If we have this organized, then we can stagger production to meet the market requirements, and farmers will not be doing it just to look for a market. Saying this, some people before me spoke, some farmers before me spoke on the extension. I think we have to reorganize the extension because the extension is not doing the work that they're really supposed to do. I think we should we should we should get we should target commodities, for example. For example, instead of having an extension person working in the district dealing everything, let us have a dashing product, a uh, wood crop production team. Let us have a tree crop production team, vegetables, herbs, and spices team, 
and this insight, and this is their job, and they will report how much is available. And the farmers will know where to get it. Of course, we have to communicate. Once this team is functioning and you communicate, the farmer will not go through all that wasting. And another point is, Dex says ask, asking for specific sizes of dashing, for example. Then a lot of dashing is going to waste. So we should get the processing people of Frudex here, or a private company, to be able to use that waste dashing, or the dashing we call waste, to do, say, chips or something else. We have to convert this dashing or plantain into, in, in, into added value commodity. And, um, The Prime Minister spoke of the consistency in production. The way we do things, again, the same point. If you cannot sell, you're going to produce a lot. So if there's a sure market, we are sure farmers will get into it. And uh, Minister Grant spoke about having more farmers. We don't really want more farmers. What we really want more productive farmers. For example, you can have an acre of land and produce X amount of it, maximize production. So in that case, you will both focus and then you will be able to know where you can get a steady supply from. It's only through commercial farming that you can sustain the market. A legal farmer there, a legal farmer there, a legal farmer there cannot give you the value. And to maintain all those little profits will be very difficult. So it is best to have this organized this way, develop some dependable commercial production. And this way, agriculture can move forward and we can sustain the market. Because if what the Prime Minister is speaking about has to become a reality, we have to get some more commercial production. We want to. That takes me to another point. The World Bank right now, okay, is capping you is capping you in the assistance they're giving to farmers, especially the livestock farmers. I'm Dr. Tosa, I'm a pig farmer. I also a business person in the sector, and I've over 40 years working in agriculture, in the Ministry of Agriculture. So I know exactly what I'm talking about. If you cap, if somebody spend, you say you're giving 50% of infrastructure. Somebody spend $50,000, you give them $50,000. Somebody spend a hundred thousand dollars, you want to give them a hundred thousand, oh, you want to give them fifty thousand dollars. Somebody spend five hundred thousand dollars, you want to give them fifty thousand dollars. That's not what we did this. And where are we going with production? Instead of bringing two farmers to meet the one on top, you have to be taking one on top and bring him down to be those here. You cannot move agriculture this way. It has to be the other way. In some cases, government has to be prepared to subsidize whatever we do. Now, that's the only way. Now, another point. The minister spoke of applying technology to production. There's a policy that must change, breed civil servants. There are many civil servants who are trying to do farming, and they will not get assistance because they have a salary. After Hurricane Maria, many of them fall in that hole. But these are the people who can actually give the change, apply the technology. There is a people who will apply people to work with them, creating jobs, at the same time, maximize productivity. So if we keep them out of the loop, we'll not give them support, we'll not give them assistance. How do we expect agriculture to do? And for us to get the 700,000, 700 million, is the Prime Minister, and for us to be able to compete with the, with the imported goods in the supermarkets. I was talking to a farmer just on Sunday, and one supermarket teller, the only way she can, he, she, he can buy her chicken is if he drop the price to the chicken that is imported. But that is not practical, because this chicken that's been imported has been subsidized, and it is mass production, and if at all, we don't promote and get people to consume what we produce, agriculture will be nowhere. 
I want a suggestion anytime I'm available. Well, good afternoon. I'm here as an exporter slash hoster. Um, I, I, and I used to I because I'm speaking. Oh, my name is Mandy Benjamin. I'm a hoster shipping from Port area. And I say I because I am speaking for me. Because there's no support when I speak on behalf of the exporters in my area. No, we, I still say we, because we have had challenges. And I sympathize with them, because they have a very hard life to go over there in the morning, prepare the cup, so that we can get it. But when we get out there, it's a challenge. The challenge is, we have other markets competing at cheaper prices. They get to the port earlier. The quality um, sometimes is better. The, pre the presentation is much better than ours. The taste is not necessarily better. But most of the times, you buy with your eyes. And when you buy with your eyes, it is different than when you buy with your mind or, if you, or when you keep your health in mind. As the minister was saying that, we should plan, we should eat what we grow and grow what we eat. But when you go out there, for instance, in the supermarkets, and as a mother of five, six, the challenges of you not working, living from hand to mouth, how much can you produce that is grown locally? When you go, for instance, and you get three plantings at five dollars, how many pounds we lose over in their market? Because I remember the banana market as I was telling next year. We lost our entire banana market after the after Maria crop, for instance. Um avocados, which is seasonal, and so many other crops. How can we compete on crops that are seasonal here in Dominica? When you get, for instance, avocado zero from San Domingo, and they tell you it's cheaper. Even if, even if it is water, as some of them say, how can we compete? There's no... Hmm? Well, how do you market your taste when you cannot supply it? So the only thing, the only crop that we have that we can supply every week for entire year is banana and plantain. So we have to always, the agriculture ministry have to find ways so that we, including all the other root crops that we have and our tree crops to be able to produce year round so that we can compete. Because if you cannot supply at what, whatever given time, you lose your market. So, I'll stop here. But I have so many issues where the export is concerned and it's all. Thank you. Um, Olivia Morris. Agroprocessor. I'm here this afternoon. I'm here this afternoon as an agroprocessor and um, exporter. I agroprocess bananas from green to ripe. So most of the bananas you see on the supermarket shelf would belong to me. Um, although there are other processors as well who are coming. I have been into processing for over 30, banana processing for over 30 years and um, into export for quite a while. But my daughter is here and she's the one who is handling the exports. I will speak on both, but first I want to say that it's very sad because we just lost a market in Antigua where we shipped container of basically 300 boxes of bananas weekly and um, other maybe it was approximately 50 cases of plantains, dashing sweet potatoes and other stuff. However, in recent times, we haven't been able to supply the market weekly and now they've gone to St. Lucia. Um, we are hoping that we will be able to retain that market um, soon. What we realize is that 
bananas become very inconsistent, but it's, it's inconsistent at this point. However, between December and April, we can never get our quantity of bananas. And I need basically two to three hundred boxes of bananas a week for the local market. And I'm almost never able to get that. Um, but what we've been doing, we've been juggling lately, and I would allow her to ship her container. We have lost the map. Both to St. Lucia and St. Louis. So, so you not get supply from No, we cannot get the supply that we need it from the farm. Now, after April, there's going to be quite a lot of bananas. And that's why we will try to hold on so we can get to April when we'll be able to export. Last week, they called and told us don't ship this week. We are hoping that we'll be able to ship next week. They haven't given us a call yet. Um, Hotel Atlantic View, Jerry Williams, but my contribution is not necessarily um, pertaining to the hotel sector, but more on a marketing basis and also the getting the younger persons involved in the farming. Um, I think an approach to introduce farming or agriculture into the schools, especially the secondary schools, so that they produce and on a yearly basis you can have competitions. What you're doing, let's take for instance someone enters into first of all, the Prime Minister mentioned the target of 2030, that is eight years from now. You enter into first form, up to fifth form, that's five years of doing agriculture. Gets you into that agriculture culture. So now you're producing, let's say in each school, five, ten persons who are interested in agriculture. Um, let's say for instance, you, you give an example of, you can see a lot of musicians comes out of, come out of the school system. We can have farmers coming out of the school system and even within that you you can use the IT aspect of it to, to help um, you know in managing the, the the whole school system in regards to farming. Now adding to the IT sec, um, sector I'm not sure if agriculture has a database. I, I listen to a lot of farmers, agro-processors, and hucksters. If there's a database in regards to how many or how much pounds are exported, the local supermarket, how much they buy, so then you know exactly how much is being consumed on a monthly basis, quarterly, so you know exactly where you need to improve on. The Prime Minister mentioned about creating a marketing arm, which is a great idea. Um, have that arm not only send out correspondence, but take, go to road trips to the US, different, visit different states, meet with different distributors. I think one of the biggest issues is that we try to distribute from here, and usually there's a gatekeeper in regards to getting your products into the supermarket. Let us engage these people. Bring down the distributors, have conferences, let them sample our produce. And at the end of the day, once they are, how should I say, they, they enjoy it, they definitely would want to sell our product. So again, this is just from a marketing point of view. Um, and rebranding of agriculture, creative culture, um, in regards to doing different food festivals. Pineapple Festival, Mango Festival, create farmers' fest, marry entertainment with the farming. So you create an entire new culture, new rebranding um, of the whole farming, the food, and we market the product. Thank you. Hello, my name is Singwala from Chris Williams, and I am a chicken farmer. I'm also livestock. We have a problem with the chicken industry. We eat a lot of chicken in Dominica. Our production is good, 
But now we have the increase in the price of feed. And I want to know how the government is going to assist us to be able to stay in the market. Because many times, my, um, the persons I deliver to will tell me, we cannot pay you the amount that you want because we can get it much cheaper in America. We have to look at food security and what we're giving our people to eat. Our produce, our chickens, would have a better quality in Dominica, which means long term, we have to spend less on the health bill. That is what we have to focus on, keeping our people healthy. When we get that third class and fourth class um, chicken from America, it isn't the best thing with all these hormones that we are, in, that we are injecting in the chicken. So I'm imploring you, the government, you represent us, how you're going to assist the farmer to be able to be the producer, to be able to feed our people. We have eggs. I produce eggs. It costs me two bags a day to feed my chicken. It costs me $100 because the feed has gone out. I get four trays of eggs. This is $80. We're talking about transportation. We're talking about labor. How is that sustainable? It cannot be. So many of us will have to go back from the market at that time. Another issue I have is that of livestock. We, I have a lot of cattle. I lost 60 heads of cattle following Murphy Act. I am trying now to rebuild my farm. I go to the, um, the um, where they sell the, the uh, medicine and the bad news. And I'm told, yes, but that's it was. You have to go and use something. I can't remember the name of it. This is a cancer that you get cancer from. I cannot leave my workers to spread the cattle. The cattle get sick. I cannot sell the produce. So it is these are the things we have to have a market where you have the thing on. Not wait until it is finished and you come for the better call and there's none. That cannot is not sustainable. Because if something happens, we have a war going on, we have no food security, what are people going to eat? So these are the things we need to address. And try, Mr. Prime Minister, I'm imploring you to encourage organic farming. Those of us who are going to organic farming, if there's some way you can help us to supplement or help us in a way that we keep down the cost so our produce can be marketable and can compete on the other uh, producers that you from us. Thank you very much. Thanks for that um, very passionate and historical uh, presentation. And I, you know, it, I, by the way, I'm Sam Raphael. I'm representing Jungle Bay. They asked for hoteliers. So I think it's important because we are uh, an important sector as consumers. I don't know if you people think about it, but you export your product to, for consumption outside. Well, well, tourism is an export commodity, it's just consuming Dominica. So essentially we're bringing the market to Dominica to consume Dominican produce. Because why else would people travel to the Nature Island other than to enjoy Nature Island produced um, um, farm products? Well, I just want to touch, it's not necessarily um, uh, geared towards the government per se, but to all of us. I, first of all, I want to commend the organizers for putting together this very lively session where you bring people together and exchange. I know I also operate in some of the other islands, and we may think that we're unique with some of these issues, with food security and a huge import bill and so on. We're not worse than, actually we're better off than most places. Not that we don't have room for growth, we have a lot of room for growth, but we need to put this in perspective because it, it is a challenge. And how do we mitigate against that? And one of the things I, I think we need to, to work on, uh, the Prime Minister had the goal of $700 million uh, GDP, agricultural contribution to GDP. I think we need to really focus on really consolidating the, the products that's consumed here and we have a large number of hotels that are being constructed that are scheduled to be open before this time. What are we doing to support 
the hotel. What are we doing to help the hotels, to help us as farmers, help you as farmers? Uh, I brought my chef along with me. He's an international chef. And his thing is, he's smiling now. He's like, what an education I'm having in Dominica. I'm so glad I came. That was his right. Because it's so challenging for him. Every place else, you have a hotel and you're a chef. What do you do? You call a distributor. And they bring all the stuff you need, whether you're in St. Lucia, Barbados, and that's how it works. Here we're committed to buying local stuff, and I tell you, we're not going to buy anything from outside that we can buy from a local farm. It costs us more, but we think it's part of our product, and we have an emotional commitment to that. But you can't rely on every hotelier to have that kind of commitment. So somehow, we need to find ways to network, to make it, to create a more comfortable environment for the hotels to be able to buy locally. And we need high quality things, especially related to vegetables, a variety of vegetables, maybe things that aren't consumed by Dominicans all the time. How many different varieties of lettuce do we have available in the marketplace? You know, or any type of vegetable. We need a whole range and our people are coming to explore, to have a culinary experience with lots of colorful vegetables. Talk about the fruits. We have some things, but we can grow a lot more. And it will be consumed by persons in that industry. And for us, it's about, a, about variety. And also things like melons, the PM talked about. I mean, not just cantaloupes, we need that. We need honeydew that can be produced here. There's also the canary melon. You can go down. I mean, the more variety you have, the more you help us in tourism, the more we can help you. So I don't know, this isn't really addressed to the government per se. Sometimes we expect all of our solutions to come from the government. But there is an economic opportunity here. And somehow we have to seize it. I see my, my good friend with the bananas. We grow a lot of bananas at Jungle Bay, but we buy bananas from her ripe and bananas to support the local market. We're not growing things to compete with the farmers, but somehow we need more, and, and I know it's a difficult thing and it's new and it's good that it's early in the game, but this is something that I think we can work towards because I do believe when you look at our food bill, you know, going into the year 2030, there may be at least 150 million of that will come from the tourism sector. At least that will come, that there'll be at least that much demand from the hotel sector for locally produced things. And this is not a negligible amount. We need to concentrate on supporting that. And by the way, if you produce good lettuce for the local, for, for your local people, you got extra to export to the regional market, to the international market. So I think, you know, there's an opportunity for good synergy there. And I encourage this kind of discussion, but specific recommendations and specific action and there's opportunities for emerging entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs to really get in the game. Because if you don't take advantage of this, I tell you five years from now, somebody's gonna step in and it'll be much easier to import everything and we'll be having this lamentation because we didn't take advantage of the opportunity, yeah? So thank you. All right, thank you.